Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and it is time to gas up the DeLorean, bring her up to 88 miles an hour because we are going back in time today. And I've always loved it when companies release source code, either to their game or their game engine, I don't even care when it came from. And today's engine is B-Render or Blazing Render from Argonaut Games, probably most famous for the game you're seeing in front of you. This is Carmageddon. It is somewhat famous or infamous for being uh, controversial for incentivizing the murder of people pedestrians, and cows. Uh, also, this is somewhat famous for being the game engine behind Microsoft's Movie Maker. 3D Movie Maker. I, I never actually played with this one. I do remember hearing about it. I know there is like a cult following for it. Uh, but what we're talking about today is the B-Render engine behind those two games and several others. And there's a fellow out there named Foon or Foan or Foani, I have no idea, F-O-O-N-E. Um, he is a hardware slash software necromancer, and he just collects this stuff. He got permission from uh, the CEO, uh, Jez San, of uh, Argonaut Games, which, by the way, is now defunct, to publish the source code for B-Render Engine. They're also working with Microsoft uh, to try and get the source code for 3D Movie Maker out there. They said the biggest problem with open sourcing 3D Movie Maker was the dependencies on the engine. So now that the engine is available, well, hopefully we'll see 3D Movie Maker Source available in the future. Now, this same fellow, Phone or Foon or Fooney, uh, he has a wiki out there for B-Render Engine. A lot of really interesting information here, including the documentation. We'll get back to that in just a minute. Um, also, there are a variety of different sources for the B-Render um, out there. There's a couple different versions here. Now, we are talking an old game engine. We're going back in time to 1998 for this one. This is probably not... Let's just say the most useful video I've ever done. This is more for, uh, hey, this is interesting. You should check it out. Not, hey, you should choose this. Although there is kind of a vibe for creating those retro PS1 style games. Well, the best way to make a retro style game is to literally use a retro game engine. And this is as retro as they get. So in terms of titles that were built using the B-Render engine, we have 3D Movie Maker, Alien Odyssey. Uh, I'll skip the canceled ones. Uh, Bung... Bundesliga uh, man, I know I mumbled that one. Uh, Total Football Management, uh, Carmageddon, Carmageddon Two, Carpocalypse Now, Croc One, Croc Two, Doctor Who, Destiny of the Doctors, F One Manager, F One Manager Professional, uh, FX Fighter. Um, we got Independence War, I War Defiance. Uh, Nickelodeon made a 3D movie maker uh, or a Nickelodeon branded version of Microsoft's version. Pete Sampras's Tennis, 97. Most importantly of all, we have Play with the Teletubbies. Uh, Private Tier 2, The Darkening, made by EA Manchester, which is interesting. Uh, Queen, The Eye, Search and Rescue, Sensible Soccer, 98 and Surf and Destroy. So some decent titles made there. Sensible Soccer was huge over in the uh, the mainland continent over there. Um, and uh, obviously the big ones here are, are probably still going to be the Carmageddon titles. So hopefully we get to see the Carmageddon source code at some point in the future as well. So as I mentioned earlier on, there are documentation links. These ones actually bring you to like some embedded type site. I would go ahead and download the PDF version. It is much more readable. And it also kind of starts with, so there's a tutorial, by the way, and like a documentation and, and the B render engine or blazing render engine is mostly a graphics rendering software. So this is for, um, drawing things on screen, etc. This walks you through the various different functions available. So it compiles down as a C library. It does things like your scene graph, handles lights, cameras, and models, handling of items in the world database, textures and uh, environment mapping, uh, rendering in a number of different styles, scene picking. Uh, I do believe there are pluggable renderers for the stuff of the day, so direct 3D and 3D effects, that kind of stuff. Uh, scene picking, math, um, transparency, file system management, uh, so that is kind of the, the functionality that B-Render provides. It takes the form of a C library, a set of headers and library files, plus tools for turning your stuff into uh, compatible with B-Render format. So the documentation is pretty comprehensive. Uh, so if you want to walk through uh, the details here, it, it's all here in the documentation. Again, there's several hundred pages of documentation. I'm not going to go through all of it. Uh, but all of the library functions are documented here if you want to go ahead and check that out. Now, the key thing here is the source code itself has all been released on um, GitHub right now. It is marked as under the MIT license. He does have a link uh, to the authorization, or he did have a link. Is it still here? Um, there was a link to the email basically giving authorization to do so. Uh, it has been approved uh, by Jez San, the former CEO of Argonaut. 
I don't know that I would use this commercially, even though the MIT license in theory should allow it. Uh, but I don't know that, in, again, outside of making a retro style game, I'm not sure there is a lot of value here uh, to most people. Though all the tooling is here, so we got a number of different things. Again, we're back in the 8.3 file naming extension, so some of these directors aren't going to tell you too, too much. Uh, but you have things here for sound, uh, converting your geometry over, uh, taking in 3DS files to their built-in uh, render format. So 3DS is still a pretty commonly supported format. Shouldn't be too much of a problem there. Uh, so all the tooling is actually in here. If you're wondering in terms of code, what you're looking at here, uh, well, I'll go here for the math libraries. For example, what you're going to see here is you've got a combination of old school C, like so, and then we have assembly. Yep, we used to write code in assembly. It's actually, assembly isn't as scary as it immediately looks, but you do need to know kind of like quite a bit more about the underlying hardware to figure out why you were moving certain things into certain addresses, etc. cetera. Uh, so back in those days, yeah, anything that we wanted to be performant was written in assembly. It's kind of like the whole, you know, uh, do your logic in Lua, but your high performance code in C++, well, it was the same thing. It just used to be the uh, logic was done in C and the high performance stuff was done in assembly. Uh, in terms of actually getting this code up and running, good luck with a modern compiler. It's just not going to be a fun experience. So if you want to get this working with Visual Studio, 2022, you, sir, are a brave man. It does use make files, so you might be able to get it up running with GCC. I don't know. Uh, I don't think I would go down that road. But what I did do uh, is I checked out the make files, and what I found is under, uh, so there is a make all bat file here. Um, I thought, oh, so right here, make all bat. And what I notice here is they do a build for Borland, which was actually the first C++ compiler I owned, Microsoft Visual C, uh, and Whatcom. So the way I understand it, as far as I know, the actual versions here are Borland C++ 4.5, uh, Microsoft Visual C++ 2. Uh, I know it gets weird with their names because they rebranded their um, C compiler to Visual C++ around that time, by the way. And then Whatcom 10.6. So your best bet if you actually want to make this stuff work is to run one of these compiler suites. Now, the interesting thing is I managed to track down all three. So if you want to go ahead and get the old school version, the uh, the installs are actually all saved here on a site called WinWorld. Is this legal? No idea. Do I recommend doing this? I don't care. I just let you know uh, these guys are available. There are a number of downloads out here, so you can get uh, like the, an ISO of the original CD image here, or even the German version. Uh, so you can go ahead and install it like that. Uh, cool thing is uh, 80 megabytes for an entire development suite. And while you're there, check out OWL. I miss the object window libraries. Uh, also, uh, there's Whatcom. Uh, this was probably the high performance compiler used for games from the DOS extended era. Uh, 10.6 is available here as an ISO download as well. And then finally, Visual Studio is here also. So all three of the compilers used for this are available. Uh, if you want to go ahead and build from source, uh, that is probably the way to go. I will link all those in the linked article down below. Again, the legality of it, I do not know. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to tell you to use any of this in a commercial project. What I can say is nobody cares. Uh, I don't think Microsoft's going to come after you for pirating Visual C++ 2 or Borland. I don't even know. No, Borland doesn't exist anymore. They're now a Brazilian company of some name. And Whatcom... I don't think Whatcom exists anymore either. So I don't think anyone's going to come after you for, you know, if you're technically pirating one of those compiler chains. Or now that it's open source, it is quite possible that somebody uh, could to, could port it to a modern tool chain. With that old school ASM in there, though, I think it's going to be a challenge for sure. But anyways, that is the source code for B Render. There are actually two versions out of it. One came, I believe, from uh, Movie Maker 3D, and another one came, I believe, from an iOS. SD Sorry, not iOS. Um, OS X. Uh, no, uh, the IBM version. Uh, Visual Age. Oh, I don't remember. OS. Oh wow, it's it's not coming in. Basically, OS two. <laughs> It was there eventually, uh, version of their SDK. So that's where these two different versions of it came from. Um, if you're interested, I think he split them this way. B no, no, they're both here. Um, but there are uh, two revisions of it out there from different versions in time that they've found. Uh, interesting project for sure. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of these like kind of historical releases. And do you have any use for this at all? I'm curious. Let me know. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.